Hello YouTube, my name is Jason and this is Line where today I'm going to teach you about the get class method. And I'm also going to teach you about the hash code method and how it works with the equals method and I'm going to show you some of the Eclipse interface and how you can work with all these like getters and setters. So let's go ahead and begin. The first thing we need to do is, I'm coming right over here. If you notice, I only have simple things, just the simplest stuff you could put inside of a class and make it function. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to write out object one, and then I'm going to do uh, get class. And you can't overwrite this method, because this method has somewhere on the lines of 50 other methods. So... And these are all methods that are inherited with the get class method. So, and we'll go over more of that when we get into generics, how this works. But right now, just know that you can do a bunch of other stuff with it. The get class method, if we print this out, all it's going to do is tell us what the type, the class of object was. And the class of object was type, which was type. So that's why that comes out the way it does. Now if we do dot, then we can find out other little things about it. And we can go from checking like the get name, get uh, simple name, get modifiers, get uh, canocial name. And then you can come down here and check like the get constructors and get classes, get class. And all these other things, it has somewhere on the lines of like 50 methods that you can work with it. And if this isn't coming up for you, just backspace and come up. If it still doesn't like this, you can hit control space and it'll pop up this. And each one of these gives you a definition of it. And you can just hit click on that and then it'll show you the definition of what each one of these methods do. Um, we're going to go over the hash code one later. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to just go ahead and show you the super class. And all this stuff that we was working with, like um, the equals method and all that stuff, all inherits from this class right here. Java.lang.object. And that's where we was getting all that information for hash code. Even the get class inherits from this super class. So every class you will ever come across always inherits from the object class. So automatically and then you can have it inherit from its secondary class as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the hash code part. The one thing I want you to do with this right now though is I want you to go ahead and pause the video and I want you to look at all these definitions for all this stuff and just mess around with them for a little bit and then whenever you're done messing around with it for a little bit uh, go ahead and unpause the video and we'll start with the hash code okay now I want to start with hash code hash code is a pretty neat little thing and what it does is it gives a numeric value well oh, an integer value to your item say I want to check the integer value of object one. This is what it comes out to be. It's a real big number and generally you want to, anytime you want to use the equals method, you want to override the hash code as well. So the quickest and easiest way to do this is to come right up here to source and click on this generate hash code and equals. And then it's just going to ask you to generate these. Now, we have them all generated and ready to go. And as you can see, it overrides hash code and it overrides equals. And this is the equals method. And this is the absolute best way to do this. Because if you don't do it this way, say I created this as a totally new uh, type. And say I wanted to throw a... I wanted to give some values. I want to go ahead and delete that just so I can show you. Say I wanted to create a constructor. You can come right up here to this source and create a constructor for your fields. And click OK. 
So now it has created the type constructor for me and it's given all these values. So now each one of these have to throw in values. If I was to even throw in, say, the same value for each one of these, and because this is a chart, remember you have to use the single quotes and just say I use this exact same value. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm just going to throw it right into here. And if I wanted to use the equals without overriding it, I would get an error. Because, not an error, but it would come out false. Because even though these are the exact same, they're two completely ob different objects. And as you can see, it's false. Now, if we was to override the way the equals works, we can actually have it come out true. So let's go up here, and we'll just go ahead and go to source and hit hash code and equals. And then we want each one of these to be clicked. And now it will override the equals method. It also overrides the hash code, because every time you override the equals method, you need to override the hash code. And I'll explain that in a second. Now, I'm not going to change any of this. I'm just going to run it. Now it comes out true. And the reason it's coming out true is because now it's only checking these in the uh, method. And it's checking also the type, the object's type. So it's checking all of that and sending it back as a true value because now it's overridden. Now the hash code... As I was saying, if you're going to have two items equal, their hash code has to be equal. That's why if you change the equals, you have to change the hash code. That way, the hash codes have to be equal as well. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to print out the hash code a couple times. And we're just going to throw in the hash code of each one of these. And okay, now we're going to check the hash code for one and two. And when we print it, now the hash codes are the exact same. And that's because we had to change this hash code right here when we changed this equal sign. That way, they printed out the same result. Now, if I was to take this off. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one more time, and I printed it. The reason it's coming up different is because even though those are the same, they have completely different hash codes. And that's why it's coming out false, because the way the hash code works is it the equal sign works as is. It checks the type, and these types have different hash codes. So that's why these are uh, coming out unequal. For these to come out equal, you have to go do something like this and you have to just say type object 2 equals object 1 now if I print it out even though they have the exact same value as they originally did now they come out equal and the hash codes come out the exact same and let's go ahead and hit control Z and put these back up and as you can see now these hash codes are a lot smaller than the original ones and it's because the way these are wrote out. And it sets, it says prime times result. So it's this prime number of 31 times this result. And then it just adds these values to it. And that's how that works. And then it sends it back to the hash code, which we print out on the screen. And all it's doing is checking these. And with this one, it's just checking if this object is equal to this object, meaning if this class is equal to this object that's sent over, then return true. If this object is equal to null, then return false. Just in case someone sends null over, like null, and sends that over, then you get a false. But that's not what we're after. What I have in here, object team. So if we get that object 2, it sends a null over. And that's what that's saying for this part right here. This part right here is saying if get class is not equal to object.getClass. So 
remember we was going over the get class and if we use the get class on here it's just going to come up to this type and over the object dot get class so this object's a get class so object get class so if we use the get class remember it's going to say type so these are equal so it's not going to do this it's just going to skip over it but if they're not equal it's going to return false so it's going to skip over that and then it's going to create a new object and it's going to say type other and then it's going to override object that way it's a type now because right now it's just a object which is pretty much everything and then it's going to come into here and the reason it overrides it right here instead of up here because we want this to be an object because the object is the lowest it can go on uh, the type so uh, integer is an object a uh, this class is an object just remember all this stuff is objects and that's why it sets the object that way we can send whatever we want over to this equals say we can send like a uh, Say I created a int x equals 5 or 2. I could send x over because it's not being specific. It just wants an object, period. And int is a object. So that's why that works out the way it does. So let's go ahead and delete that. We don't need it. And it has to go through all this stuff and it wants to keep that object the way it is. That way it can compare two different things, many different types against each other and see if they're equal. And then it changes it to right here to make it a type object. And then it checks if babe, this babe, is not equal to the other babe, which is other babe, which is this and it checks to see if they are not equal then it's false but if it is equal it's true and just continue on and it just goes through each one of these then it checks bingo and Doug and if none of these return false then it returns true and sends back and we get this result so now it's true and that's how that equals for that works and then the hash code I just showed y'all that so I'm not gonna go over that again this is all I'm going to go over in this tutorial. This is the end of all the object inheritance. The next tutorials will go over like abstract classes or something. I don't know yet. But right now, that's all I'm going to go over in this tutorial. Thank you for watching. My name is Jason. This was Lionware. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and have a great day. Wow.